Some get it with ease to buy, talking about petrol, wife, or so many others. They still say it's unavailable. And we had PPMC here live, the DPR, as well as NNPC, they've all been speaking on this particular fuel situation. And just uh, recently, the federal government has been able to pay some form of monies owed to the marketers to see how this can be eased off finding an end to the perennial fuel scarcity in the country. We're not being joined by Idoka Steven. He's the convener of Modular Refinery Owners Association of Nigeria and also a lawyer and a player in the oil and gas industry. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. You know, in trying to find solution to all of this, when we say perennial, there's hardly every, any year we haven't seen problems like this. Once it's getting close to the Yule tide, uh, the petrol suddenly disappears with one form of reason or the other. Uh, does that bother you? Yeah, it does, and it should bother anybody who is, um, who is an actor in the industry and, of course, regulators. Um, you, you should, one, one thing you want to do in your business is to be able to give satisfaction to people who actually, to your clients, and where you, you want to sell products and then you don't have product to sell, it becomes too worrisome, especially when the narratives out there is that an, an average uh, marketer is greedy and we've been accused of hoarding um, and all sorts. So it's really, really worrying. Um, nobody would want to go into business without making profit. So why would you want to like, um, keep products and not sell? The problem is that we have issues with access to products and these issues are as a result of so many um, interwoven factors um, so it's really really worrying issues of access to products yes you, can you especially more on that yeah for instance for you to be able to get products you have to buy and for you to buy you need forex and then you also need facilities from the bank um, in getting this you, you need to be paid for money your own and because mo the, the major product that we consume which is pms is heavily regulated um, to make the differentials. We, we do not sell according to the market forces. We sell at a government-controlled price. And then the differentials is made up by way of subsidy by the federal government. So it means for us to be able to get return on what we sell, the government has to pay um, the differentials. And so where there is a delay in payment, it begins to affect us because we need this money to be able to buy products. So when you have this kind of scenarios and where there is an increase in demand, and then where there are, where, where there are um, other market forces, other market forces like um, um, difference, differences in exchange, it begins to affect our ability to purchase this product. But prior to 2015, you know, every year, December is a time every Nigerian dreads because whether the government owes subsidy to the marketers or not, Something happens every December, and then we're also aware that the government has approved the payment of uh, the subsidy monies. So where would it, it, yeah, it, it, it's, easy, it's easy to, to understand why in December you have um, a fuel scarcity. Um, like I said, we, we, we need credit to buy products. Um, banks operate, the, every, every bank closes shop by the year, end of the year, they won't like take stock, so they won't like um, see which of, recall their loans to see how they are performing and all that, they, they, they lend less. And then there's also an increase in, um, in consumption because there's a whole lot of activities tied around the Yuletide. So with these two coming together and then you're not getting paid, um, it affects your ability to import more products. But can't there be some arrangement made ahead of time, like some kind of planning for the month of December? Yeah, yeah it, the, the only solution to this is um, where, where you have um, a commodity that is purely imported, you would not, you would not be able to exactly plan because the forces are not exactly in your control. And that's why for us um, who are uh, looking to us investing in modular refineries in Nigeria, saying they should encourage us to build refineries, local refineries in Nigeria, be it conventional or modular as the case is. Once you have your refineries, then the country would be able to plan. Here, where, where, where you are not, where you are importing, it is not exactly in your control. There are other factors outside your control that can determine whether you, sh you would have products or not. For instance, I talked about Forex, you talk about plat. 
um, and all those they could affect. And sometimes you could you could even have congestion in the port because it's the end of the year, and Nigeria being a heavily dependent, a heavily import, a country that is heavily dependent on importation, the, the the ports are usually very busy at the Ulita season. So all these factors can actually affect the um, inflow of petroleum products at the time. Uh, w without subsidy, do you think this would fly? The problem will abate. Well, yeah, without subsidy to an extent, it will because uh, it makes it more um, lucrative for people who want to invest in this sector to come in. Um, from my experience, from my experience um, over the years um, in trying to build moderate refineries in Nigeria, one of the major concerns that um, most of the investors have had is that, okay, what happens with the, the subsidy regime? We know that most of the products, the, the most demanded products are actually heavily regulated. Um, so those, 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 those are, those, those, if that is handled, it will to an extent affect, you know, affect availability of product if subsidy is removed. And then what we're saying is that why do you want, why, why would you want to subsidize um, the finished product instead of subsidizing the production? Like in the words, and I, I, I borrow the words of um, the former um, CBN governor that said we should rather subsidize production than subsidize consumption. Um, and the, the advantages are numerous. Apart from the value chains that comes with subsidizing production, you also would be able to control the market forces, which is very, very, very important. You know, I, I, sorry, I, I want us to go back to, because we're looking at ending this whole problem. Uh, we, we know the problems already. And uh, if you say subsidies, subsidy removal is one aspect leading uh, us to a solution, we should also be looking to discussing about uh, refineries. And uh, when you use the word modular refinery, let's break it down and see uh, what you mean by modular refinery and oh. how easy it is for, 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 for the country or individuals uh, to come into that uh, uh, okay. scheme. Yeah, modular refinery is like um, the name implies is um, that simple refineries that are built in modules and then can be transported and then coupled they are simple units that, add, that does them um, separation, um, treatment, you know, and, and um, one other factor I can't remember right now. So um, those, those are that word, but basically modular refineries are simple um, units. And then you also have the conventional, which are bigger units. The advantage the modular refinery has is that, I, I I'd already did mention that it's easy to put together and then it's really, really cheap. You can get um, a unit for as low as $20 million, for instance, and the time for establishing a modular refinery is short. And then you can actually establish quite a number of them in places there are, there are countries where you have had successful, uh, successful modular refineries operating. Even in Africa, we have in Sudan, we have in Egypt, and they are all success stories. I know that um, in, in Angola presently, there are modular refinery projects popping up here and there because in developing countries like us, modular refineries seem to be um, the way to go.